Hello everybody and welcome back. It's another daily dose of Psalm and Proverbs. Today is number 14 for both. I hope you're all doing well and good morning, good afternoon, or good evening wherever you are in the world <laughs> if you're lending an ear. Um, I hope it's all well for you. Um, honestly, today was one of those lazy days for me. I just stayed in bed <laughs> pretty much all day because I stayed up late, but that's okay. <laughs> That's okay. But um, let's get right into it. Psalm 14. Folly of the godless and God's final triumph. To the chief musician, a psalm of David. The fool hath said in his heart, there is no God. They are corrupt. They have done abominable works. There is none that doeth good. The Lord looketh down from heaven upon the children of men, to see if there were any that did understand and seek God. They are all gone aside, they are all together become filthy. There is none that doeth good, no, not one. Have all the workers of iniquity no knowledge, who eat up my people as they eat bread, and call not upon the Lord? There were they in great fear. For God is in the generation of the righteous. Ye have shamed the counsel of the poor, because the Lord is his refuge. Oh, that the salvation of Israel were come out of Zion, when the Lord bringeth back the captivity of his people. Jacob shall rejoice, and Israel shall be glad. Ah, this is another psalm today, Psalm 14. Um, what I'm getting from it, you know, which I'm pretty, sh I'm assuming you do too, is that it's like our Lord's wondering what happened. What happened to you know all the believers and of our Lord and all of those who say our Lord is not real, He does not exist. Why are they being so foolish? You know, why do they think this? And, you know, why do they do th what they do? Um, and, it, and it sucks because, especially right now, um, as you know, I'm not trying to force anyone. I'm just trying to bring awareness, as you know. And um, it's, there's a lot going on right now in the world, a lot of wickedness and hatred and foolishness and, you know, basically a lot of not God-fearing people. And, and it's... And it's scary to think that because, you know, he's real as we live and breathe. Just like the oxygen is invisible, right? But we know that is real and exists. Well, our Lord is also, you may not be able to physically see, but he is real, you know. And um pretty sure there have been times in your life that things happened they may have gone your way for the better and you think it was good luck or what a coincidence or it was all me or you know whatever have you when in all honesty no it wasn't good luck it was no coincidence and it wasn't all you you know you have to remember that because there's nothing we could do without our lord nothing you know and um you have to constantly remind yourself that because of if if you don't there's definitely pride ego you know arrogance and you'll get lost you'll basically will get lost in the sauce right so that's not good you don't want to get caught up in that crowd because it's not it will not end well you know but some 14 to me as you know, it's just the Lord wondering why why so many people gone astray. What happened to the sheep? You know, they got caught up in themselves. And it and it pains our Lord. It really does. You know, because um, who wants to see their children do wrongful things? Even though they know what's right to do, but they wish to do wrongful things anyway, regardless. Without care in the world. But um, that was Psalm 14. Let us go on to Proverbs 14. All right, here we go. 
Every wise woman buildeth her house, but the foolish plucketh it down with her hands. He that walketh in his uprightness feareth the Lord, but he that is perverse in his ways despiseth him. In the mouth of the foolish is a rod of pride, but the lips of the wise shall preserve them. Where no oxen are, the crib is clean, but much increase is by the strength of the ox. A faithful witness will not lie, but a false witness will utter lies. A scorner seeketh wisdom, and findeth it not, but knowledge is easy unto him that understandeth. Go from the presence of a foolish man, when thou perceivest not in him the lips of knowledge. The wisdom of the prudent is to understand his way, but the folly of fools is deceit. Fools make a mock at sin, but among the righteous there is favor. The heart knoweth his own bitterness, and a stranger doth not intermeddle with his joy. The house of the wicked shall be overthrown, but the tabernacle of the upright shall flourish. There is a way which seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. Even in laughter the heart is sorrowful, and the end of that mirth is heaviness. The backslider in heart shall be filled with his own ways, and a good man shall be satisfied from himself. The simple believeth every word, but the prudent man looketh well to his going. A wise man feareth the departeth and departeth from evil, but the fool rageth and is confident. He that is soon angry dealeth foolishly, and a man of wicked devices is hated. The simple inherit folly, but the prudent are crowned with knowledge. The evil bow, bow before the good, and the wicked at the gates of the righteous. The poor is hated even of his own neighbor, but the rich hath many friends. He that despiseth his neighbor sinneth, but he that hath mercy on the poor, happy is he. Do they not err that devise evil? But mercy and truth shall be to them that devise good. In all labor there is profit, but the talk of the lips tendeth only to penury. The crown of the wise is their riches, but the foolishness of fools is folly. A true witness delivereth souls, but a deceitful witness speaketh lies. In the fear of the Lord is strong confidence, and his children shall have a place of refuge. The fear of the Lord is a fountain of life, to depart from the snares of death. In the multitude of people is the king's honor, but in the want of people is the destruction of the prince. He that is slow to wrath is of great understanding. But he that is hasty of spirit exalteth folly. A sound heart is the life of the flesh, but envy the rottenness of the bones. He that oppresseth the poor reproacheth his maker, but he that honoreth him hath mercy on the poor. The wicked is driven away in his wickedness, but the righteous hath hope in his death. Wisdom resteth in the heart of him that hath understanding, but that which is in the midst of fools is made known. Righteousness exalteth a nation, but sin is a reproach to any people. The king's favor is toward a wise servant, but his wrath is against him that causeth shame. Hoo hoo! Today's Proverbs was very long, which is not bad, of course, um, but it's definitely talking about, as you know, um, a lot of the Proverbs, they're all connected to each other, and, you know, they have separate lessons, but they're linked, you know, and it's always about 
living righteously in the Lord and then, you know, basically not living righteously and about yourself, right? Um, because if you were living about our Lord, you would not be doing, you know, all that foolishness and nonsense. And what I'm taking from Proverbs 14, you know, there's a lot in here, a lot of warnings and lessons to take from it. Um, basically, to sum it up, honestly, um, living in the ways of our Lord, which is righteousness and good, right? You will have no life. You will know life. And of course, it's not saying there will be no hardships. There will be no trials. I'm not saying that because, as you know, if you're doing good and people see it, some people will rejoice with you, you know, and there's others who will envy and try to become an obstacle and get in your way, you know. And if you're doing, you know, wicked things and foolish things, um, sure, um, um, a lot of people might be, you know, in the same group and, you know, they praise each other for, you know, tricking people and deceiving them and taking advantage of and causing pain. You know, and that's not of love. It is not a love, you know, and that means it's also not of our Lord. So it's like, why would you do that? You know, and it pains our Lord to see us do these things to each other. You know, it's not fun. It's not cool. You know, and um, it, it, it's not good. It's not good. So why should we do each other wrong when we don't have to? And regardless of your... Um, financial status or the clothes you're wearing or the cars you're driving or um, you know uh, I guess your family name or you know whatever um, like social media too amount of followers you have or if you're a celebrity or famous or whatever have you, you know regardless um, because um, you know with our Lord it's come as you are. It doesn't matter the clothes you're wearing. It doesn't matter your, um, you know, how much money you have. It doesn't matter um, where you live. You know, our Lord j just wants us to come as we are. And I heard this from somewhere. I honestly can't remember if it was within um, my Bible or if it was with from my um, speaking with one of my family. I can't remember where I heard that from. But I just know that our Lord wants us to come as we are, you know, and we're not perfect. And we don't have to be perfect to reach out to our Lord. We don't have to because he already knows. He already knows what we're going through. He already knows what we've done. He already knows what we will do. But regardless of that, he just wants you. He just wants to reach out to you. He's always, you know, our Lord's always chasing us. Uh, whether you realize it or not and um, sometimes it can be difficult to notice um, but you know it's unrelenting love and what our Lord and Savior you know did for us you know pay for our sins our debt full and sins from the past present and the future things we are going to do don't take advantage of that and think because our Lord and Savior done that. You could do whatever you want. You're freed to, you know, like an all-out buffet, and you're forgiven, and you could do whatever you want. It's not like that, you know. Um, you must fight to from, you know, doing foolish things or wicked things and committing these sins and things. You know, you have no business of getting into. Don't do it. You must fight because. Um, you know, heaven and hell is real, and, you know, this life we're living in is temporary. This flesh we have is temporary, you know, it's not forever. And one day, um, it will, I guess to put it not so, how do you say, uh, I guess negative or badly, but our bodies will expire. They're not forever, you know, um... I'm not saying not enjoy, you know, every moment that you have of your life, but don't be doing foolish things and wicked things because no, um, you don't want to wait until the last minute or <laughs> you're not waiting for the last minute, but it will be too late when you realize the truth. And 
I know I'm not trying to force things down anybody's, you know, beliefs or their background, but I mean, if you just live rightly, you just live justly, I don't know if that's a word, but righteously and do good and mean it generally, not to do it just to, you know, excuse me, um, take advantage of someone or, you know, to, I don't know, you have a scheme, I guess you could say, um, come from your heart, come from your soul, you know, and definitely avoid doing nonsense, foolish, wicked things, okay? Um, and you don't have to trust my word, just, just think of it this way, this is how I think about it. I look at it as if, if you cannot speak if you cannot perform a task or you cannot behave whatever you're going to say whatever you're going to do or however you're going to act if you cannot do that in front of a child more than likely you probably shouldn't be doing it right like saying words you speak or um, some nonsense acts or your behavior you sh and you wouldn't do it in front of a child so more than likely you probably shouldn't be doing it and that's one way I look at it um, you know because that does put you in check I know it puts me in check and I try to remind myself of that when I think about going doing something whatever and um, and um, you know other things too because we shouldn't be doing it in the first place but um some Psalm 14, you know, I know our Lord is just, just wondering what's going on. Well, our Lord already knows, of course, but um, Psalm 14, um, you know, about us, that why so many of us gone astray, um, you know, and it hurts it pains our lord and proverbs 14 is basically a huge warning and reminder and lessons about you know um living righteously and living wickedly and it's not that complicated um it really isn't it's it's us that make things complicated more than they have to be and um it's unfortunate to say that because when you see you know, animals like cats and dogs, squirrels, birds, um, you know, you see them and they, for the most part, they get along, you know, um, like, let's say squirrels and birds, they could be up by a tree, you know, looking for food. They are not bothered by each other. They're not trying to attack each other. They're at peace. And then you look at us humans, we get, there's a lot of hatred. Um, especially as you know, especially here in the States with skin color and we're all humans and there's a lot of hatred because of skin color and then you look at animals like squirrels and birds, not even the same species and obviously different colors, but they're at peace. So it's like, how come we can't be at peace? But you see all these other animals here at peace with each other, you know, um, only they'll have a confrontation because one's trying to hunt the other for food or they're defending themselves or their family and that's it they're not doing it out of hate or spite or you know just to do it but us we doing it just to do it and for no good reason and it's nonsense so and that's for us so-called humans of a higher intelligence right so but yes but um i hope if you did lend your ear that you're able to take in these lessons and reminders and warnings and take the good from it too um, regardless of your background or what you believe in you know um, because I mean why not live righteously and treat others the way you want to be treated and your loved ones and not try to get over somebody take advantage hurt them you know um, I don't know, just a lot of people, they they just like seeing others in pain and 
and it's sad because I'm sure they wouldn't want to be in pain or their loved ones, you know, but I hope you're able to, you know, take your own interpretation of today's Psalm and Proverbs, and I pray that our Lord can use me through this and that it is good work, and I'm not doing it just to do it, and I do pray it can reach at least one soul. Um, as for me, a lady in her video, and she gave her testimony and her message. Um, our Lord used her to touch and awaken my spirit to know that the way I was living was not right. It was of destruction, and it wasn't going to end well. Um, and so I pray that our Lord can use me as well, like he used her, to reach out to me and prayerfully can use me to reach out to at least one soul I'll just one soul because um, there's just so much going on you know and this life is not forever so it's definitely not forever so just remember that um, but until next time y'all I hope you're all doing well wherever you are in the world and stay safe and be careful of those you hang around with and talk to and um, until next time, catch you later.